Hello YouTube friends, I'm going to do some cooking today. A few people have asked me if I would make scones and talk about how to make scones. And actually uh, a while ago I made some cheese scones. Um, a couple of summers ago I was sitting at the table here sorting out all my seeds because I'm guessing scones are a summer type of thing. <laughs> and so I feel like sitting outside in the pavilion with a cup of tea and a scone but this time I'm going to make fruit scones and um, I've done a bit of research. I mean, the scones I made last time, I made them out of the Biro book, which is um, a book that you, I think you used to collect this, a ticket from the side of the flower bag and send them in to Biro, the flower makers, and, uh, and they'd send you a Biro book. This is the 37th edition and this is my mum's. Uh, and so, of course, flour, scones. Uh, and so that recipe that I made, I think, uh, the cheese scone one, was uh, a beer book recipe. But I've done a bit of research because a number of people have asked me about them. Somebody said that their scones um, they followed the recipe perfectly, but they came out like hardtack. <laughs> and I replied that you could actually break a window with scones if you go them wrong. <laughs> so I've done a bit of research. There's a newspaper column in The Guardian called Cook the Best. And it's exactly what it says. It gives um, all the opinions from lots of different sources for one recipe. And then it says, and here's the definitive recipe for you to use for whatever it is. So I thought, I can't go wrong. I'll use that for cook the perfect scones. Well, the ingredient, there's only a few ingredients in scones. Flour, sugar, uh, some sort of uh, fat and uh, a raising agent and then whatever you want the scones to be, uh, whether they're uh, cheese, savoury scones or, or sweet or f fruit scones that, that, like I'm making today. Their fat was lard in the cook the best. Now, I know lard is, you know, if some people use it in pastry and it makes for a very lovely, light, short pastry. But there's no way I'm putting lard in my scones. The Biro book. Now, this is how important scones are to the to Biro. It's on page four. And they've got some great recipes in here, but the fat they want you to use is margarine. I'm not using that either. So we're going up the food chain with fats and we're going to use butter because that's the only thing to use. So I've got all the ingredients uh, here and I'm going to uh, have a go at making scones that won't break your window. I think, and the cooks that I've chosen um, agree, that the less you handle it, uh, the lighter they'll be. Now, I've looked at Delia Smith, Mary Berry and Jamie Oliver. I've got all three of those um, uh, great cooks, I ideas and opinions. And I printed out two recipes, the Mary Berry one and the Jamie Oliver one. I like Mary Berry because she's like cooking royalty. You really can't go wrong with Mary. But I like Jamie because he's just a little bit sort of uh, experiments a little bit more with ingredients. He's a little bit wacky and, and appeals to my uh, way of cooking a bit more. Although if what you need is reliable outcome, you can't really go wrong with Mary or Delia, but Mary really. So I've got the ingredients. They all agree that we need flour, some sort of fat. Both of them say butter a raising agent and sugar and then whatever your scone is. So I'm going to move the camera and get you lined up so that you can see what I'm doing. How's that going to be? We're going to see from there, aren't we? So I'll just put my recipes to one side for now. I don't, I, I don't really need the recipe, but in the interest of research, I wanted to make sure that I was giving you accurate advice. OK, then. So the flour is self-raising flour and um, 500 grams. I'll leave the recipe of the one that I'm using in the description below. I'm actually using uh, Mary's recipe, so I'll put it up there so that I can see it. There we go. 450 grams or a pound of self-raising flour. And I've done that thing that television cooks do and weighed them all out beforehand. But it's just this ordinary self-raising flour, this one here. And I haven't sieved it because it's pretty, it looks pretty great actually. 
It doesn't have any lumps in it. My hands are clean. Now, the other thing we need in here then is some sort of raising agent. And um, both Jamie and Mary both agree. Actually, I've got an open one of these. I won't open a new one. I've already got one. You must never run out of things like baking powder. Not if you're cooking things often. Now, they both want you to put in two level teaspoons of baking powder. Okay, one level teaspoon of baking powder. Two. Two level teaspoons of baking powder. Uh, sugar, this is always uh, in the Biro book, it says something like two tablespoons of sugar. And these guys, mm -mm -mm. I've got about 60 grams of sugar in there. And then the butter part. Uh, what Use whatever fat you like, but it does need to have some fat. And whereas pastry is like half fat to flour, so you've got eight ounces of flour and four ounces of pastry, of um, eight ounces of flour and four ounces of butter. This one is has less butter. So to this amount of flour, we need 100 grams of butter. And I've weighed it out, as I say, right here. Now, and what I'm going to do while I'm making these scones, I'm actually going to move the camera and bring you in overhead so that you can see all the lovely uh, stages to make these scones. So I'll do that now. All I'm doing at the moment is cutting the butter up into smaller chunks. So when I do my filming overhead, I have this box thing that I put over the top and there's a wee hole in the top where the camera lens can photograph. So I'm going to line that up with you now. So what I'm going to do then is rub the flour into the butter, get the two combined. You can do this with a mixer, either a stand mixer or a handheld mixer, but I find that it takes no time at all to do it with your fingertips. And it's quite, it's quite a pleasant activity, actually. So the baking powder's in there and the sugar's in there. The butter and the flour. The next ingredient, then, is two eggs and a drop of milk, if you need enough milk to make them go um, um, damp, if they're wet enough. And some fruit. And I'm using sultanas. You could put cherries in here now. If you wanted to. So he uses sour cherries, um, cranberries, apricots, chopped apricots. At this point you can put in any kind of dried fruit you like but I'm going to go old school and put in uh, sultanas. Now you need to keep rubbing until you can't see distinguished butter in your flour. You know what I'm doing. I often think when I do these videos that you know exactly what I'm doing. I'm not teaching you how to do anything. I'm just making a few scones. And I've got the idea that I'm going to sit outside with a cup of tea when they're cooked and enjoy them. Or one, maybe. Now, scones are best eaten the day they're made. So why I'm making so many, I'm not quite sure. Now, I put the sultanas in before I put the wet stuff in because I need them to be evenly distributed. And uh, Mary Berry says a handful. There you go. Handful of fruit. Just mix it round. I'm going to make a well in the middle. And then these are my lovely hen's eggs that I've just collected the last couple of days. Look how gorgeous that looks. Get every last scrap of wet out of there. 
couple of eggs. And then I'm just going to mix it round with a knife. I'm going to pop the oven on. It needs to be a nice hot oven. And this is what they mean about a drop of milk, because if that isn't wet enough now, we need to put a little splash of milk in just to help the whole thing to come together. And this is when I like to get my hands in because you can feel how wet it is rather than with the knife where you can't really. Yeah, we need more milk in there. OK, that's fine. That's that feels wet enough now. So now what I need to do. Is incorporate all the wet with the dry, but not overwork it. I think that's the thing with scones is that you mustn't overwork them and roll them out too uh, too much or a little bit more milk, I think. Just to get this last bit of dry incorporated here. That's fine. That's good. Yeah, that's great. Now that looks a bit of a mess, but it's going to be just fine. And Jamie likes to rest that in the fridge now for 15 minutes. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to transfer it to this bowl here because that'll fit in the fridge better. Cover it with a plate and that's going to go in the fridge now. Well, that's been a useful piece of time because that's been in the fridge for a quarter of an hour. The oven's come up to temperature. It needs to be really, really warm. And I've done all the washing up. Now, I don't often do this, but I think I will today because I'm doing them properly. But it's nice to wash the tops with milk or beaten egg. So I'm going to go into my egg stash here. The hens are laying really well at the moment. And I'm going to get the little bantam egg, which is really tiny. Thank you, Sylvie. That's really kind of you. Contribute to my scones here. And then I need a... Uh, brush to brush the tops with and I need to beat this up so it's the right consistency for painting. Now like I said the oven needs to be really hot and it is so that's my egg wash there. Now there's another nuanced thing about scones Fluted cutters, which are these wibbly ones here, are supposed to be used for fruit scones. And round plain cutters are supposed to be used for cheese or plain scones. Depends who you're inviting round for scones. Now I've got this blue thing here because it's like a, a, a really useful thing to roll pastry out on or whatever. And I'm just going to put the lightest dusting of flour on here. The non-stick thing, it's really handy. And then my dough is beautifully rested. I've never really rested scone dough before, but you know, Jamie, he knows what he's talking about. Now in the cheese scone video, I think I talk about this such a long time ago. But the, again, the less you handle this, the uh, better the scones will be. And so although I've got my rolling pin and I'll, get, I'll maybe give it a tiny bit of a roll, just pressing it out like this and also um, not making it too thin. That's the other thing that um, you can get. Um, so, you know, that's the other thing you can get wrong. So my cutters, hmm, I wonder how it's, it's about an inch, isn't it? lovely okay and now I'm going to cut the scones out 
like that. You know what I'm doing. We've made scones before. I know what I'll do with the extras. I'll pass them down the sofa. So fruit scones coming down the sofa in about 10 minutes. Lovely and warm with um, jam, cream. The jam goes on first, obviously. Obviously. I'm just going to put the tiniest bit of flour on the top there and give it a little tiny roll. It's a bit thick in the middle. There we go. That's for the people who like rolling out scones. Now what I've got over here, I'm making quite small scones because then you can have two or three. I've got a, uh, a baking tray that's uh, covered with parchment. That lovely non-stick stuff. And I also want to position them quite close together because it's very nice when they all cook and rise and all stick together a little bit. I think it was in the Delia Smith cookbook that I read. These scones are so easy. You can have them on the table half an hour after you first thought about making them. And that's pretty much what we've got going on here. It is about half an hour. Now, I can't remember how many oh, the recipes over there. I'm using a smaller cutter. So although it says you can get 12 or something, I'm going to get loads more because I'm making small ones which will cook in slightly quicker time. And I'm going to try not to have too many rollings out left because we'll, we'll use the rest of the dough to roll out and make a, some more, but only once. I'm not going to keep rolling and rolling this out. So I'm just going to press it all back together gently tiny bit of flour on my fingers because they're getting a little bit sticky. There we go. Press it out one last time and I'm only going to do that once because um, you don't, I, I think I've said that a few times now, you don't want to overhandle them. So in the time that it's taken you to watch this video, you could make some cheap, some beautiful scones for your afternoon tea. Yeah, I've made way too many here, but that's all right. I think there's uh, people I'm related to who like these. <laughs> and so with the bit of dough that's left at the end, I'm just going to roll it into the cook scone. There now, there's a nice, um, how many have we got? Uh, four by four, there we are, 16 scones there. And I'm gonna paint those, but what's left, I'm gonna make into the, the testing scone or two. Because this is the third rolling now, and we don't want it to go any more than that. So there we go. We'll just break that in half and have that as two scones for the cook. on a different tray. <laughs> okay then, so I'm going to paint these with egg now. So they'll have a lovely golden top. Be pretty generous with this. If I was making cheese scones now, the only difference would be I'd leave out the sugar, I'd put in a spoonful of mustard, dried mustard, because that's always really tasty or some a grinding of black pepper or both. I would put some sharp cheddar in and then when I did this egg wash thing, I would sprinkle some more cheese on the top. Now a nice scone that I sometimes make is black olives and feta, again without the sugar, obviously. Um, black olives and feta cheese in a scone. It's absolutely delicious. Oh, can't fancy those now. It's fine though. Of course you can freeze these 
and I think it would be a really good idea to freeze them now at this point so that you could just get one or two out of the freezer give these a little paint as well and then the oven's really really hot so I'm going to turn it down to 200 degrees centigrade and pop them in I'm putting them in for 11 minutes randomly because I need to check them after 11 minutes, 11, 12 minutes, just to see if they're cooked. And it's a really good way of testing to see if they're cooked. So now I'll do a second clear up. And this bit of egg that's left, Rita the cat likes this. So I'll give that to her. Okay, this is the test then. You just gently pick one of them up and look at the bottom. And the bottom should look cooked and brown. And it they do. Did you know? I'm gonna put them in for look at that, that's quite pale. I'm gonna put them in for two more minutes. Yeah. Two more minutes or one even. Two. Two more minutes. That looks better. That looks much better. And now when we look on the bottom, let's try a middle one because that was the one I was, was too pale. That's perfect. That's cooked beautifully on the bottom and they feel a little firmer. There they are now. Brilliant. So I'm going to, I'm going to transfer these to a cooling rack now and put them in the window. But while they're still hot, I'm going to take a couple out to the pavilion with a cup of tea and see what they taste like. So a couple more things about scones. Three things, because it's not they're not for cats. Okay, so that's just like important that we know that you're not getting one. No, you're not. No, even though you might want one, you're not getting one. But they're called scones. Some people call them scones. That's fine. You can call them scones if you like, but uh, I'm not going to have an argument with you, but they are actually called scones. And the other thing about them as well, is that instead of cutting them with a knife, what you can do when they're as fresh and beautiful as this, is you can actually just split them apart like that. 
so that they've got a nice craggy surface there. And then here's another thing, Let's split this one. I have jam, that's my own jam that I made and I haven't got cream, but I've got creme fraiche, which is, uh, I haven't got any cream and creme fraiche will be absolutely lovely on here. But that means if you're putting cream on or creme fraiche on your scone, do you need butter? Well, obviously, I think you do. But just a little, you know, you don't need to go mad with the butter. They're very crumbly when they're straight out the oven like this. And very delicious. And like I say, this could be clotted cream now. It could be just thick double cream or it could be creme fraiche like I've got here, which I think is going to be fine. And using this small cutter means that you can have two scones, four pieces, without feeling greedy at all. Okay, now there's another thing that's just occurred to me before I start eating them. Some people like the top of a scone, some people like the bottom. Which one are you, I wonder? If it's a cheese scone, then I like the top because there's lots of nice melted cheese on there. But actually, with a fruit scone, I prefer the bottom. So let's give this a try, shall we? Hmm. Oh, they're good. Those are not like hard tack. Those won't break your window if you, th if you threw them one at your window. In a couple of days time they might. So they really need to be fresh and fresh out of the oven. But what I sometimes do if I've got some left tomorrow is I'll spritz them very lightly with a little tiny bit of water and put them in the oven for a few moments. And that seems to refresh them. That water sort of seems to um, refresh them, rehydrate them a little. It's a t it's, that's a tactic I use with um, dried baked goods like uh, croissants or, or bread. If you just put just a little spritz, I have a mister that's specially for it that hasn't got plant food in. <laughs> and I go whoosh, whoosh, spritz, spritz in the oven and they're fine. But what I now need is for family to come and visit me. So I'm putting the beam out there. John, call round on your way home from work and take a few of these home. But I'm going to uh, just enjoy the sunshine. It's a beautiful afternoon, absolutely gorgeous. And they're not too sweet either, which means that you could actually put loads of jam on if you wanted to, because they're not going to overpower you with sweetness. So let's try a top now. And the top's got the lovely egg wash on it, which makes it lovely and golden. Do you remember that film, Julie and Julia, where Meryl Streep was the um, amazing Julia Childs? And was it Rachel Adams who was Ju Julie? Julie and Julia, yeah. And she was cooked her way through the whole of Meryl Streep's, uh, not Meryl Streep, the whole of Julia Childs' uh, book on French cooking and recipe by recipe in a year. I had the idea that I might do that with the beer book. I had an idea to do that. And so thinking that I would cook every recipe in the Biro book, I started to read it. 
And so there's scones. We've just made the scones. A couple of pages of scones. Drop scones. Singing hinnies. Potato scones. And then you get into tea loaf. Granny loaf. Soda bread. Biscuits. Flapjacks. More biscuits. Biscuits. Oh, look, more biscuits. Chocolate chip cookies. Pastry. Lots of pastry. Tarts. Little tarts. Big tarts. <laughs> Lemon meringue pie. Treacle tart. You get the idea. By the time we get to the end, we're doing steamed puddings. <laughs> Pineapple upside down cake, Swiss roll, sponge cake, pies, cakes, more cakes. Can you imagine what size I would be at the end of cooking my way through the Biro book? Chocolate eclairs. Anchovy twists. I've already got all this pandemic weight that I'm struggling with. I would then have Biro weight as well, wouldn't I? So that little series that I thought to do, cook my way through the Biro book, like Julia Child's book, is not going to happen. Not at all. <laughs> the scones, on the other hand, definitely are.